What is a tax lien on a house? What a great question. Thank you. We're going to dig into that and show you exactly how this can open up your financial world. Just understanding this right here. In this video, I'll show you how with a very small amount of money, you can blow your retirement account through the ceiling and retire on that island with that cocktail of, of your dream, so to speak. We're also going to talk about how it's necessary to do the right research, but not overcomplicate this. We can keep this really simple and doing it from the comfort of your own home. All of that's going to be covered right in this video. But remember, hit the like, hit the link, hit the stars. But more, most importantly, if you have a question, text it over to me or whatever you call that thing down there and I'll answer this. I answer all the questions in here. It means a lot to me that you guys are taking the time to do this, taking the time to learn it. And this is about yours and your family's financial future. And I take that very, very seriously. So let's talk about what is a tax lien on a property? Very simple. Okay. Let's talk about the history here. Tax lien certificates on properties for delinquent property taxes. That's what it is. Every single property, forget the homeowner, the property has property taxes on it. Who happens to be living in that, that property at the time is responsible for the taxes, but those never go away. So if I sell that house five different times and five people live there, it still owes the property taxes. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because that's super important to understand because that goes back to the validity and the safety and the, and the, and the mandated laws that are involved in here. The county needs this money. That's what it is. Property taxes pay for our necessary services. Number one is school. 55, 65% goes towards the schools. And then you've got police departments, fire departments. You've got all of this infrastructure that we have. If anybody's ever traveled to a country without a comprehensive property tax system, you know right away, stopping's voluntary. They got divots in the road that'll take small cars. An education system is non-existent. Okay. All of these things you know, really foster a real bad infrastructure that goes on. Anytime you go in United States, you look at now, here's another thing. When you go around the United States and you see infrastructure crumbling and then right across the way is better. I've literally been in a county and drove across a state line and it's completely different because of the way they handle the property tax on it. So what happens is this, when a property owner is one year delinquent on the property taxes, the county government is going to hold a sale. Okay. Not all of them. This is about half of the states out there. They say, okay, enough's enough. We need our dough. We're going to have a sale and we're going to, the state establishes the interest rate and the redemption period. The county can kind of say, this is how we're going to conduct our sale. So, okay. Interest rate, $2,000, 18%. Somebody says, I'll take it for 18. Sometimes they do it for bidding down the interest. So somebody says, you know, 17, 16, 15, who's ever willing to accept the lowest interest rate. That could be the way the county does it. Or they could say $2,000 lien, $2,005, $2,006. Every dollar you go over effectively lowers your yield from 18 to whatever that is. So you need to be very aware of how a particular county handles this tax lien sale. This is extremely important. Okay. We're not going to be talking about research. We're going to talk about what these are right now, because there's a lot of research that has to happen. So what happens is, is when you give the money to the county, you're not buying somebody's property. Okay. Let me repeat that. I want to clear that up. You're not buying somebody's property. All you're doing is you're putting, giving the money to the county that needs it for the infrastructure. They go ahead and put a lien on the property that goes on file down at the county courthouse, a legal document but you're the lien holder, but they owe the property taxes still to the county. The property owner doesn't even know you're involved in this most of the time. They still owe the money to the county. This is important to understand. Did you cause anything to happen by buying the tax lien certificates? I'll give you a hint. No. Okay. The tax lien was already there. The county just needed their money. So you took the place, of the county, super important to understand. So the property owner, you're not doing anything to the property owner that hasn't been in place already by law. So when the property owner pays the property taxes, they don't pay them to me. They pay them to the county, okay? Because that's who they owe the money to. So they pay the county. The county looks at their paperwork and goes, oh, okay, we've got a lien holder on this property. 
We can't drag our feet. This isn't some government bureaucracy that gets around to it when they feel like it. They typically have to send a check within five to maybe 10 business days. Now you've got your money. Now I want you to think about this, okay? You put the money up there, get 18% on your money. When the property owner redeems to the county, you get a check in the county. Didn't have to watch the stock market. Didn't have to look at little green arrows going up and little green arrows going down. Didn't have to worry about who got elected. Didn't have to worry about what war is being fought. Didn't have to worry about the price of gasoline. Doesn't matter who tweets what on Twit or, or whatever that is, X or whatever it is. You don't worry about those things because you're getting your money for you. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, yeah, that's great. What if they don't pay? Here's the beauty of it. Because you're just replacing the county, it's really a county lien. So I'll think about this for a minute. Haven't property bit taxes been due on that property forever? Remember we talked about that? We could sell it five times. The property stack's taxes are still owed, no matter what kind of mortgage they have. So in every single state in the United States, including Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, they have a rule in there that says if you fail to pay your property taxes, the county's position automatically pops up and becomes the first lien. Whether I paid the taxes to the county or not is irrelevant. It's still a county lien. The property owner still owes it to them. All I'm doing is taking their place as the first lien holder. Yes. So if they don't redeem those taxes within that quantified time, maybe it's a year, two years, whatever it is in that area, I can go ahead and start the foreclosure process because I've basically taken the county's position. They got their money. It's almost like selling a note. Some of you know what that is. So the county said, hey, we need this money. We're going to sell you a note and we'll give you 15% when those guys come in and pay. Like, oh, okay, I'll do that. Oh, by the way, if they don't pay, you get their house. Okay, that's kind of the way it works on that in reality, in layman's terms, if you will. So when I go to foreclose on this property, I supersede everybody. I supersede the mortgage, the second, an IRS lien, Aunt Sally that did some work on it, lent their, their nephew money, whatever the case is. Any liens and encumbrances, I get the property. Now, it's not just simple, I foreclose and I get it. I got to notify everybody that's got a financial interest in this property. Do not do this on your own. Okay. Do not do this on your own. You either hire, just talk to us. We'll tell you who to work with on that. You can send me a message or whatever the deal is. You want to deal with a real estate attorney or the county. We'll let you know who to work with and all that good stuff. Typically a fee on this, it depends on the complexity of the property. It can be anywhere from about $1,500 on the low side to a couple thousand dollars on the high side. Again, depending on the complexity, and the size of the property and all that good stuff. So once you do that, whoever that is, is going to send out the notifications and it could be a 60 day window. It could be a 90 day window, it could be a 120 day window. And they say, once you've met all of these criteria for foreclosing on property in our county and nobody comes in and redeems those taxes, guess what? You get the property and you will own it free and clear. All liens and encumbrances are eradicated from that property. Not a bad way to make it happen. This is why I can say using this strategy, you can find properties at 4 to 10% of fair market value and own it free and clear with no liens and encumbrances. That's what makes this so beautiful. Here's the other nice thing about it. You can use your retirement money to do this. Remember I told you at the very beginning, stick around at the end. This is what it is. So if you set up your retirement account correctly, it's got to be self-managed and self-administered. Those are the key things. It's a private retirement account. If you do this correctly, I can use that money to buy the tax lien certificates. And one of two horrible things happen. Either I get my high interest rate or I get a property free and clear in my retirement account. So let me ask you a question. What would be the tax ramifications if I bought a property for, say, $30,000 in back taxes and it was worth $200,000 and I sold that property? Zero. That is a good number when you're dealing with the IRS. Trust me. So this is how you can take a very small amount of money and turbocharge your retirement account and send it into the stratosphere. You know, I can't tell you the amount of people I've met at some of my conferences that have said to me, you know, Sean, I've lost everything for, I mean, I've been through so many different economic, you know, we had the dot-com bubble of, of 98, 2001, you, you had the 9-11, you had the real estate crash in 09 and, and the, the after effect of that, you had the pandemic in, in, uh, in whatever that was, 2020, all of those things happen. One thing that is steady 
is the tax lien market. It just doesn't change. But I've seen these people come up to me and go, you know, it took me all these years to get to my retirement to this number and it's been wiped out or whatever the case is. I don't have that much time. And when they start seeing that last little twist on there, when you start realizing you have a lot more control of your retirement than you know, I'm telling you, I see hope. I see, oh my gosh, it's not gonna take me as long to get to where I need to go. I had a couple one time that said they lost 43% of their retirement during the financial bubble. I mean, they were looking at me like, what do we do? And when I showed them this one strategy on there, I mean, it was like, you know, God parted the clouds and the lights opened. I mean, they were just so excited about this. And you can do the same thing. Listen, I've got a lot of training on this. If you would like to get more extensive on this, I've got really in-depth training that shows you exactly how to take advantage of tax liens and tax deeds to get the financial picture that you want. It's just HigginsMethod.com. It's free. I give it to you. And then also there's a book out there. It's called America's Secret Investment Strategy. I'll give that to you. Let's help you get to where you need to be financially. This is Sean Higgins saying God bless and good luck. Thank you.